So which is an example of simple harmonic motion and explain your answer. I gave you two examples here, Earth orbiting the sun and waves traveling through the water. You should be able to do two things. You should be able to get an example and tell me if it's simple harmonic motion or not. And you should be able to give me an example and explain why it's simple harmonic motion or not. Um, so we haven't talked about simple harmonic motion in a while. Basically what you need to know about it is it is uh, anything that does three things. So simple harmonic motion I frequently will just write it as shim. Okay? It has to do three things. <clears throat> it has to be periodic, which means it takes the same amount of time to do the same thing every time. It has to be <clears throat> back and forth motion, which means it has to go back and forth between two positions or up and down or side to side or however you want to phrase it. Um, and then it needs to have a restoring force to bring it back to equilibrium. Okay, so two examples. The first one is the Earth orbiting the sun. And the second example are water waves. Okay. All right. So all we do for this is we ask ourselves for each of these, are they that? So is Earth going around the sun periodic? Does it take the same amount of time to do the same thing every time? Yes. It takes 365 and a quarter days for the Earth to go around the sun. It always takes 365 and a quarter days. That's why our years work out so nice. So, yes, it is periodic. Okay. What about the water? Are water waves periodic? Well, if you were to go out into the water a ways or even just stand at the beach, um, and you were to time how long it took to go from wave to wave to wave to wave to wave, it would be the same. So it would be periodic. It would be the same time to do the same thing over and over and over again. So water waves would be periodic as well. All right, back and forth. That gets kind of confusing with the sun, because obviously the Earth goes from one side of the sun to the other and then back again. But, like, why does that have to be the starting point, like? Are we going? Are we saying going from like January to like July and then back to January again, or like how does that work? So that gets kind of confusing. Like, is it actually back and forth? Because um, it's really not back and forth. It's really around. It's still kind of fitting. It, it's getting to the point where I'm not quite sure. So I'm just going to put a question mark. I'm not really sure if it is or not. Um, the the waves though are definitely. And you're saying to yourself, what do you mean they're back and forth? They go forward. No, they don't. They go up and down. Don't think about what you're seeing because your eyes play tricks on you all the time. Your eyes lie to you constantly. Okay, You're seeing energy travel. But that's not what's actually happening. What's actually happening is the water is getting pushed down and then going up, and then getting pushed down, and then going up. That's what's actually happening. If you went out into the ocean, that's what you would do. You would not get put, like, it's not like you would get in the ocean and then get pushed all the way to the beach. That's not what happens to you. You can only do that if you have a surfboard. If you just go out in the ocean, that's not going to happen to you, okay? If you go out in the ocean, you're going to go up and down, and up and down, and up and down, and up and down, and over and over and over again. So it will definitely be back and forth motion. In the case of the um, water waves, it'll be you know up, then down, then up, then down. And really, you would just stay in one place and go up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Okay? Here's where they definitely delineate from each other. And that is, is there a restoring force to get it back to equilibrium? 
Well, the first question you have to ask yourself is, is there equilibrium? And with the waterways, there definitely is. If there is no wind, if there's no waves blowing, the water is at equilibrium, it's flat. So there definitely is an equilibrium position. And is there a force to get it back to equilibrium? Yeah, look, when it's up, it gets pushed down to get back to equilibrium. When it's down, it gets pushed up to get to equilibrium. Then down, then up, then so on and so forth. Okay, So that one definitely has a restoring force to get back to equilibrium. What about the Earth? Because we're not quite sure about the Earth and the Sun one. We're kind of, yes, maybe, we're not sure yet. So is there a restoring force to get it back to equilibrium? Well, there has to be an equilibrium. So where is equilibrium? Where's the balance point? Well, we probably would say it's January 1st. But if we, set, if we actually stop and think about it, why is January 1st the first day of the year? Because some dude decided it was. It's literally it. Like, it could have been... It, it actually makes no sense to me to do that. Like, why didn't we make the first day of the year, like june 21st like why did we make the longest day of the year the first day of the year when we get to the first day of the year it's the longest day of the year everything goes down until we get to the other half of the year and then we go back again like why don't we do that i don't know why we don't do that that's just how it is um and so there's no like necessary equilibrium spot and even though there is a force of gravity to bring it back towards the sun that's why it goes around the force of gravity doesn't bring it to equilibrium. The inside the sun is not equilibrium. The earth never goes there. So it can't be um, a restoring force. It can't have equilibrium. And so the earth going around the sun is out. And so the simple harmonic motion is going to be the waves. And my explanation would be this. It's the only thing that is periodic and has back and forth motion and has a restoring force to get to equilibrium. It's the only one that does those three things. Okay? Easy peasy. Let's take a look at two and three, and then I'll come around one more time to see if you have any questions finishing up the problems, and then we'll do, uh, we'll do a short story time or something like that. Okay? So, um, what if anything happens to the period of the pendulum when you double its length? Um, let's start with this. When you, when you change the length of a pendulum, does anything happen? Yes. Yeah, something happens. So what is going to happen? When I make it longer, is it going to take longer or is it going to take less? Longer. It'll take longer. So all you have to do is you would say it increases the period. I didn't ask for an explanation. You just say it increases the period. If I asked for an explanation, all you'd have to tell me is either when we did the lab, increasing the length of the string made the pendulum take longer, or you could tell me in the equation, length is in the numerator. So if I make that number bigger, I will get a bigger answer. I'm fine with either explanation. Both the explanations are good. So it's up to you. Okay? All right. What about mass? Does mass do anything to pendulums? Oh, heard a yes, heard a no, heard a no, heard a yes. We got a no. Stamp must be right. We got more no's than yeses. It is no. So you would just write nothing. And if I asked for an explanation, you would either say, when we did the lab, changing mass had no effect, or you would say, mass isn't in the equation. It's kind of like if I gave you 10 baby chicks and I said, how many dollars do you have? The answer is, I don't have any. I have chicks. It's, I'm not gonna solve them. Yeah. So like, right, you can't solve for period with mass if mass isn't in the equation. So that's the other way that you would explain it. So that's what two and three look like. So we've got one, two, and three done. You were working on four. There's just two on the back page. See if you can knock out the rest. See if you can get it all the way finished. Um, that way you have nothing to worry about for next time. All you got to do next time then is do the springs that we're going to do together um, for the example. And then we'll give you time to work just like on here. And when you're all done with springs, then you'll be all done for the weekend. You won't have anything to worry about. You can look at the eclipse on Monday and be like, woohoo. And then you can uh, be ready to go from there. So let me come around.